Once you've assembled your documents into a PDF portfolio, you'll no doubt want to personalize it or apply some company or product branding. And in Acrobat 10, this is possible in a number of ways, depending on how much of a change you wish to make. Now, this portfolio has the default linear appearance. So let's switch to edit mode and see what sorts of changes we can make. The overall way that a portfolio behaves on screen, how the cards move about and how they're arranged, is controlled by the layout. Acrobat 10 ships with five pre-installed layouts. Click through, freeform, grid, linear, and wave. And you can also compile your own using the Acrobat Portfolio Software Development Kit and Flash Builder 4. The files produced by the SDK are called navigators and have a .nav extension. Once applied to a portfolio, the code is embedded into the PDF so everyone can see it. You don't need your viewers to have installed a copy of the nav file. I'll switch back to the linear view. Now, writing a completely new layout navigator isn't something that everyone will want or need to do. And if you like the overall layout of the layout, but you want to change the colors and the styling, there are two more levels of customization available. Themes are new in Acrobat 10. And just like their namesakes on websites and blogs, a theme file defines the visual styling, the colors for the layout, shapes of icons and buttons, borders for the cards, and so on. The layout handles all the hard work of making the animations and the buttons work, and the theme file, which is just a SWIFT with a series of graphic symbols, applies a style on top. Acrobat 10 ships with a set of five pre-made themes to choose from, and as you can see, clicking them changes the background, card styles, colors, and the button shapes, but the overall structure of the layout isn't changing. You can make your own themes quite easily using Adobe Illustrator, Flash Catalyst, Flash Professional, and unlike with a navigator, this time there's no code to write. Once assembled, you can import that Swift and apply the theme to any one of the layouts. And as you can see, we've changed our corners from round to square on the mini nav. We've had a new graphic symbol for folders. We've applied a background and we've restyled some of the buttons and the icons. If we change our mind, we can go back to one of the pre-installed themes. I'll use spring in this example as the green colors fit quite well with some of the highlights such as the model's coat on the attendee guide and i think the next thing to deal with is the color scheme and the background the colors for the card titles borders and highlights are initially set by the layout and the theme but you can choose your own color palette on the next pane down we have a collection of preset swatches to choose from and we can also create a new one by clicking on the create from existing button and then editing each color patch. Clicking save will apply our new color scheme to the file. And if we change our mind, then we can go back to one of the existing color palettes and we can remove the custom palette by clicking on the cross icon. The next panel controls the portfolio background. Acrobat 10 layouts have a solid or gradient fill and an image. You can use either or both in combination. Right now we're looking at an image that was embedded by the spring theme. So I'll turn that off for a moment by choosing none from the list and the background color will show through instead. If I choose a color, I can set either a solid fill or a linear or a radial gradient. And with the gradient fills, the slider controls what color I'm mixing with, either black or white. I can also import an image file which overlays the background color. I'll click Choose New and bring in a cityscape, which will fit with our conference theme. Now we can set how the image scales to fit the window. I don't want any borders to appear, so I'm going to choose no borders from the image scale drop down. With this particular image, the interesting bit is the cityscape at the bottom. So I want that to stay fixed as the Acrobat window resizes. So I'm going to choose bottom from the image position menu. 
I can also change the opacity of the image, which will bring in our background color. As we have a radial gradient on the background color, if I drop the image opacity, I can get quite an interesting vignette effect. If a small image is scaled up a long way, it can pixelate, and graphically we want our viewers to concentrate on the cards rather than on the background. Fine, sharp details in the background can draw your attention, so Acrobat 10 has a useful image blur effect which can, we can apply to our background image to soften it. So it's still there, but it's less prominent. If we toggle to preview mode, then I think it's looking quite good. Um, but we just need to darken this green so it stands out more against the background. We don't need to use these tools in order, so I can go back to color palettes, I can make a copy of the existing palette, and I'll swap around the colors for primary and accent. Click save, and that's made the changes without affecting our choice for the background. The final panel allows us to choose the font to be used for the default titles of cards and the descriptions and the information on the back of each card. If we choose a font that isn't universally available, then we have the option to turn on embedding fonts. This applies across the whole portfolio. It will increase the size of the file, but it will ensure that Acrobat or Reader doesn't have to perform a substitution. The final thing is to bring in a header area to tie the content together. Within the edit mode, this grey area is our empty header. If we click that once, then we open up the header properties panel. The header by default has a solid background fill. Again, we have the option of applying a gradient to that, changing the base colour and changing the mix that we apply to that colour between black and white and the opacity of the background. We have some headers to lay out text and image boxes within the header automatically or we can simply apply our own using these buttons I'll bring in an image to start with bring in the conference logo as a transparent PNG we can move these boxes around and resize them using the corner handles and we can choose how they float when the window is resized click back in the header area to get my buttons and this time I'll bring in some text I'll resize the box, double click, and I'm just going to paste in a title. I'm going to select all of this and choose a font which matches the word conference in the logo. It's non standard, so I am going to embed it. I'll make the whole lot 14 point, and then I'll just select the first line, increase that to 36 point and then I'll make all of that text white so it matches our logo and I think that's about it. If we want to change individual fonts within some of these descriptions we can just select that block of text the text field properties pane opens and we can make a change there and back in preview mode hopefully you'll agree that we've put together a very professional looking portfolio with very little effort if we want to do more than that and bring in even more styling, then we have the option to ask our Flash developers to put together some custom navigators or some theme files. Um, if you haven't got access to the Flash developers to do that work for you, remember we have the Acrobat Portfolio Exchange on acrobatusers.com where you can download sample files, templates, themes and layouts and apply them to your own documents.